Alright guys, so as part of our discussion para dito sa ating module 5 which is all about friction so let's, we will classify the three types or ito yung mga cases uh, to be specific na kalangan nating malaman sa pagsosolve ng uh, friction problem again, this is different pa dun sa tinatawag nating belt friction tsaka yung uh, sa mga wedges okay? so dito i-discuss yung magiging approach nyo uh, para dito sa tatlong classification or dito sa tatlong types ng friction problems so basahin muna natin so ayan, problem, classification and analysis so kunin ko lang tong highlighter natin so the analysis of equilibrium problems that involve friction can be somewhat complicated because Coulomb's law or the equation 7.1 is an inequality. It does not tell us the friction force. It tells us the largest possible friction force. Ayan. So, hindi directly sinasabi dito yung value ng yung friction force but yung largest possible value daw ng friction force na pwede mag-exist sa isang system. So, the equality, ito, so, do sa lecture nyo, do sa module, yung F natin, so, ito is yung ating F sub F, or the frictional force, or yung F max, the maximum possible friction, is equal to mu sub S, or ito yung value of kin coefficient of friction, yung static, multiply by N, or the normal force, can be used only if sleeping is known to impend. So, paitandaan itong word na to, kasi ayan is mahalaga, uh, para malaman natin yung classification ng friction na gagamitin natin. So, because F or yung F sub F nga natin is not necessarily equal lagi sa F max. So, ito yung kadalasan pinagkakamalian ng estudyante. So, minsan, naya-assume nila na yung F natin is yung F max na. Okay? Or yung largest possible value ng frictional force. Again, uh, take note itong word na impend. So, mamaya as we progress or do sa susunod na page dito sa ating slide uh, mas mauunawaan yung ibig ko sabihin so it is not possible to develop a single method of analysis that is valid for all friction problems however friction problems can be classified into three types Ayan. and a separate method of solution can be outlined for each type so ang ganda dito sa lecture na to ipapakita or i-discuss sa inyo step by step na process na gagawin nyo Okay? So, kailangan mo lang talaga is maklassify if ano ba yung type na problem to. Ito ba ay under category of type 1, type 2, and type 3. Okay? So, ano lang naman to Madali lang naman. Uh, lalo kapag pinaita ko sa inyo yung uh, sample problems natin for each type. Okay? So, let's proceed with the next page. Ayan. So, the first type or the type 1. So, ito yung problem kung saan hindi in-specify na ito ay impending motion. So, kapag pinasa niyo yung problem, walang sinilagay na impending motion. So, dito siya papatak sa category na to, yung type 1. Okay? So, again, type 1 is the... So, may highlighter. So, type 1, so the problem statement does not specify impending motion. So, in problems of this type, we do not know whether or not the body is in equilibrium. Therefore, the analysis must begin with an assumption about equilibrium. So, ang mangyayari, magkaaroon ka lang ng assumption na ito ay under equilibrium. Okay? So, meron dalawang pwedeng mangyari dito. So, dito papasok kung kailan mo gagamitin si coefficient of static friction at saka si kinetic. So, first again, sabi nga, assume muna na ito is under equilibrium. Okay? Para makapag-establish ka ng equation. So, you are strongly advised to write down this assumption as a reminder that the solution will not be complete unless the assumption has been checked. So, ang function nito, ng pag assume mo, is i-check if tama yung assumption. If hindi, meron ka lang gagawin. The sense of which friction force can be assumed because the solution of the equilibrium equation will determine if the correct sense. So, yung equilibrium equation mo, siya yung magsasabi if tama ba yung naging assumption natin. So, solve the equilibrium equation for the friction force required 
for equilibrium. Okay, after that, check the assumption. So, ito yung pinakamahalagang point, pointer dito. Or yung pinakamahalagang step. So, if the friction force required for equilibrium do not exceed their limit, or if the equation is ganito, yung frictional force mo is less than or equal to mu sub s multiplied by n. O, ito yung F max natin. At each friction force, then the assumption is correct. And the remaining unknowns can be computed using the equilibrium equation. But, ito, note that if F is equal to mu s, mu sub s times n at a surface, which would imply impending sliding, then the assumption is still correct. Again, ito is less than or equal. So, kapag equal siya, again, tama pa rin yung assumption natin. Okay. So, but, ito yung sunod. If equilibrium requires that F or yung frictional force natin is greater than mu sub s times n at any friction surface which is physically impossible, then the assumption of equilibrium is incorrect. So, meron kang dalawang checking na gagawin. Ano? First, if F is less than or equal mu sub s times n, therefore, the assumption is correct. But if not, if it is greater than mu sub s times n, then the assumption is incorrect. Therefore, we have a dynamic problem. So, dito mo nagagamitin or dito mo kailangan gamitin yung value of kinetic, coefficient of kinetic friction. O yung mahanap natin value ng frictional force is yung frictional force due to the kinetic friction. Or ibig sabihin niyan, under siya ng category ng dynamics, gagalaw na yung iyong uh, for example, yung object na nakapatong or yung block. Okay? So, kasi na, ano niya eh, nalampasan niya yung maximum static kinetic friction. So, maaalala niyo yung previous uh, videos na pinasend ko. Uh, once na nasa state ka na ng motion, di ba? Uh, mas madali na siyang itulak compared sa magsisimula pa lang na ano, itulak yung sarili mo. Okay? Again, once na nag-start ka na ng motion, uh, parang kaunti na lang yung resistance na nangyayari. Alright? So, I hope we're clear with that. Okay, so let's proceed with the next type. So, this is the type 2 or ito yung uh, pinaka-straightforward na analysis. Ito yung kadalasan na problems na naisosolve natin. Okay, so the type 2, so this is the problem statement, implies impending sliding and the surface where sliding impends are known. Okay, so dito, again, in specify dyan, if ito is impending, sasabihin nyo sa problem sa inyo, yung word or mababasa nyo sa problem mismo na meron siyang impending na word or impends na mo siya. And the surface where the sliding impends are known, okay? So, friction problems of this type have the most straightforward analysis because no assumption and therefore no checks are required. Ayun. So, na-skip tayo na ilang step to sa type 1. So, no assumption and no checking are required. It is not necessary to assume equilibrium, a body known to be in a state of impending sliding, is in equilibrium by definition. So, the method of analysis for this is uh, dalawang step lang. Ano? So, for number 1, set F is equal to F max is equal to mu sub S times N. So, ito guys, kasi yung adalasan na ginagawa natin. Again, kapag ganito kasi yung uh, ginawa mo lagi sa lahat ng type. So, yung previous type natin, di ba? Uh, hindi naman lagi dapat na ganito. Nagkaaroon ka muna ng assumption before ka mag-arise dito sa ganitong situation. Pero dito sa type 2 nga, since straightforward siya and naka-specify yung word na impending, so diretso ka na dito. So, at the surface where sliding impends, make sure that the sense of each F sub max is directly shown on the free body diagram. Opposing impending sliding because the solution of the equilibrium equation may depend on the assumed direction of the frictional forces. So, guys, uh, napaka-importante dito ng direction of frictional force. So, dapat yung analysis nyo medyo uh, tama na. Uh, unlike do sana una kasing equilibrium, diba yun? negative sign will tell you if tama or mali yung naging assume mo. Dito, based do sa mga forces na ka-applied sa kanya, dapat alam mo kung paano yung direction ng frictional force. Madali lang naman eh, basta lagi lang siyang opposite yung direction ng motion. O kaya nga friction eh, is lagi siya yung kumokontra or nagre-resist sa paggalaw ng isang bagay. And number two, 
solve for the knowns using the equilibrium equations. Okay, so let's proceed with the last type or yung type 3 natin. So ito naman yung uh, impend sliding pero hindi mo alam kung saan point dun yung uh, mag-a-act. So under the category of type 3, ayan. So the problem statement implies impending sliding. So na-specify na impending pa rin siya. But the surface at which sliding impends are not known. Hindi mo alam kung saan yung specific point. Kung saan ka magkaaroon na uh, impending motion. So problem of this type are the most tedious, tedious to analyze because the surface at which sliding impends must be identified by trial and error. So ayan, so magta-trial and error tayo dito. So medyo madugo ng konti yung analysis. But with this uh, method of analysis in specify naman dito kung paano yung magiging approach mo uh, madali pa rin naman yan susundin mo lang yung step by step process na yun. so once an assumption has been made the analysis is similar to that for type 2 problems two methods of analysis can be used here both of which are described in the following ok so let's proceed with the method of analysis 1 so for the uh, step number one, under analysis one, so determine all the possible ways in which sliding can impend. Okay? So uh, alamin mo muna lahat yung possible ways na pwede mag-impend yung isang body. For each case, number two, set F is equal to F sub max, so parang yung kanina lang din naman, at the surface where the sliding impends, and solve the equilibrium equation. Again, the sense of each F max should be correct on the free body diagram. Again, ayan, as far as na dyan, should be correct on the free body diagram yung direction ng iyong F sub max. In general, a different solution is obtained for each mode of impending sliding. And number three, choose the correct answer by inspection of the solutions. Okay, so for method of analysis number two, so again, for number one, uh, kapareho lang din naman sa analysis one, so, determine the all possible ways in which sliding can impend. Number two, for one of these the cases, set F is equal to F max at the surface where the sliding impends and solve the equilibrium equation. And for number three, check the solution by comparing the friction force at each of the other surface with its limiting value. If all the forces are less than or equal to their maximum permissible values, then the solution is correct. So parang yung anina na yung type 1. And if a friction force exceeds its limiting value, mu sub s times n, the solution is invalid. Ayan. And the another mode of impending sliding must be analyzed. This procedure must be continued until the correct solution is found. Ayan. So hanggat hindi mo pala nasasatisfy itong mga condition na to, uh, kailangan uh, mag-ano ko ulit maghanap ng aniba, panibago solution or possible ways para masolve yung problem na yun. Okay, so mas maunawaan nyo naman tong different type ng friction problem uh, kapag nag-solve tayo ng mga problems. Okay? So, let's proceed with the problem solving. Okay, guys. So, for our first problem, so, basahin muna natin sabay-sabay. So, the 50 kilogram block, ayan, so ito nakapatong sa surface na to, which is shown in the figure, is initially at rest on a horizontal plane. Ayan, horizontal. So, we need to determine the friction force, or yung F sub F, between the block and the surface, ayan. After P was gradually increased from zero, to 150 newton. So, ibig sabihin pala yung applied load P natin is varying with the value in between of 0 up to 150 newton. So, aside from that, in-even din dyan yung uh, coefficient of static friction. So, medyo pixelated na lang siya. Ayusin natin. So, coefficient of static friction and yung isa is for the kinetic so, the static is 0 0.5 and yung for kinetic is 0 0.2. So, another na palatandaan ko dito is that always mas malaki yung coefficient of static friction compare kay kinetic. Kasi nga, yung principle nung pagtula, di ba? Once na nag-start ka ng motion, uh, 
parang kaunti na lang yung nagre-resist na force dun sa inyo body okay so itong problem na to is uh, may consider natin siya as under sa type 1 uh, these are the problems uh, statement does not specify impending motion so kung babasahin nyo yung problem hindi natin makikita dyan yung word na impending motion Alright, so ang muna natin gagawin dyan is to solve for the value of the maximum um, frictional force na pwedeng ma-experience yung body na ina-analyze natin. So, ba't natin gagawin yun? So, i-check natin if yung value na 150 Newton, which is yung given nga sa problem natin, is enough para uh, mapagalaw yung object natin. So, i-check natin if under ng 150, siya ba is magiging static or kinetic na uh, based sa value ng uh, coefficient, yung maximum coefficient, ah, sorry, yung maximum frictional force due to the kinetic friction, due to the <laughs> static friction. Like, little, little na. Okay? So, we need to solve first for the F sub F. So, sabi natin maximum yan. Okay? So again, ang alam natin dyan, siya is equals to sa kinetic uh, coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Again, uh, given yung mass ng iyong object, which is 50 kg, so kailangan natin yung maalaman yung corresponding weight ng iyong object. So that is equals lang sa mass times the gravitational acceleration. So to solve for the ma uh, weight ng body, so that is mass, which is 50 kg, and then multiply by 9.81 meter per second squared. So the corresponding uh, weight is equivalent to, so pindi natin yung calculator. So that is equals to uh, 50 times 9.81, which is equivalent to 490.5. Newton. And the equivalent frictional force in maximum due to the static friction. So that is equals lang sa 0 0.5 times 490.5. So that is equals lang sa 0 0.5. So the answer for that is 245.25 Newton. So ano yung conclude natin dito? So, since itong uh, yung frictional force, yung maximum uh, possible frictional force due to the static friction is greater than 150, ibig sabihin, this will remain in static. So, ito, kahit lumampas siya ng 150, as long as less than sa value ng maximum uh, frictional force na 245.25, it will be remain at static position. Again, ang pinapahanap lang natin dito is yung frictional force. So, hindi naman, uh, hindi naman ibig sabihin yan na ito yung final answer natin. Okay? So, again, uh, it, it will depend sa value ng iyong uh, force P, yung 150 Newton. Okay? So, with that, if this is the applied load P, uh, so if P is yung maximum natin, which is 150 Newton, so, ibig sabihin yung uh, frictional force between the block and the surface due to the load P will be equals to 150 Newton. Okay? So, wag malilito ha. So, di, uh, ito yung additional scenario dyan. So, para mas maunawaan nyo kung bakit 150 Newton din at hindi natin i-consider ito, uh, 245.5. So, ba't natin hindi ito ang i-consider natin? So, ito yung mangyayari dyan. So, for example, mag-add uh, tayo ng additional scenario. So, for letter B, ganito yung gawin natin. So, para lang ano ah, mas maunawaan natin. So, for letter B, let's just say na yung uh, coefficient of static friction is na-reduce natin to half. Ang yung 0 0.25 na siya. So, don't worry ah, kasi na-satisfy pa rin naman natin yung ano niya yung uh, principle na dapat mas mala ilagay yung static coefficient compared kay kinetic. So, 0.2 so that is less than 0.25. Okay. So, if for letter B 
So if the coefficient of static friction is equal to 0 0.25, therefore, uh, yung frictional force, yung maximum possible frictional force natin, will be also reduced to half. Or that will be um, yung N natin. So pareho lang din naman yung weight ng block. Wala naman binago sa problem. So 490.5. Uh, Newton and then multiply by 0 0.25 so check natin yung lalabas sa sagot dito so 490.5 uh, times uh, 0 0.25 so the answer for that is 122.625 so since this is less than do sa 150 Ibig sabihin, kapag uh, na-reach natin yung force na P, which is equals 150 Newton, eh, yung maximum frictional force mo due to the static friction is hanggang 122.625 lang yan. Ibig sabihin, therefore, this will undergo motion or papatak na siya dun sa category na dynamic. So, ang kailangan natin gamitin dito, if ang force P na i-applied mo is 150 Newton, Therefore, yung frictional force na gagamitin natin is yung para kay dynamic na. Kasi nga, ito, uh, 150 Newton yung naka-applied na load. Eh, yung maximum frictional force nga, since uh, ni-reduce natin siya to palahate na 0.25, ang maximum na lang is 122.625. Ibig sabihin, lumampas siya doon. So, pag na-exceed na niya yung uh, maximum frictional force due to the static friction, mag a na siya ng motion. So, ang gagamitin na natin ngayon dito, instead of 0.25, yung 0.2 na. Okay? Yung value per for kinetic. Or that is 0.2 times yung weight ng block, uh, 490.5 Newton. So, that is equals to... Ayan. So, 98.1. So, ito yung answer natin dun sa letter B. Okay, so I hope clear tayo dun eh. And I hope na gets nyo kung ano yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa. So, again, this is under the type 1. So, ang sunod natin i-sosold, uh, yung under ni type 2. So, ito naman yung uh, most common type ng problem sa friction. Okay, so for the second problem, uh, basahin natin. So the 100 pound block in the figure shown is at rest on a rough horizontal plane before the force P is applied. So determine the magnitude of P that would cause impending sliding to the right. To the right. Okay, so ang hinahanap dito is yung uh, load P that would cause impending sliding to the right o yung paggalaw ng block uh, papunta sa anan. Okay, ano yung force na yan? So, para dito, so this will uh, papatak do sa category natin na type 2. So, the type 2, so since ito yung mga problem statement which implies impending sliding and the surface where sliding impends are known. So, kung mababasa nyo yung problem, ayan. Uh, nandiyan yung word na impending. Okay? So, etong problem na to, ayan, aside from the word impending, so, pwede rin kasing uh, other word for impending. So, for example, determine the largest force speed that can be applied without causing the block to slide to the right. Or, basta opposing lang sa direction lagi ng motion. Or, determine the smallest force speed that will cause the block to slide to the right. So, pwede ayun yung mga word na sabihin sa mga type ng problem na to. Okay, so analyze muna natin. Uh, ilagay lang natin yung mga loads na kailangan natin hanapin dito. So, before we can solve for the load P, so we need to determine first uh, what is the value of your normal force and yung frictional force natin. So, pag gumawa ng free body diagram and nilatag mo dito yung mga loads, ayan. So, again, weight is always towards the center of the earth. Pababa. Normal force. Uh, perpendicular lang lagi this surface. Ayan yung normal force. And yung frictional force, uh, since yung motion nga natin is papunta daw dapat sa kanan, uh, yung frictional force natin is opposing lagi. 
or laging pakabila yung direction. Okay, so ano lang naman to, eh, same thing sa mission forces Y, sa mission forces X. So when you take summation of forces ng y equals to zero, assuming upward direction is positive, so n is just equals to 100. And since meron tayong value ng n, uh, we can now solve for the value of the frictional force. So frictional force is just equals to mu times n. So ang sabi nga dito, impend, uh, yung pumipigil para gumalaw sa kanan, so we will use the value for the static uh, coefficient of static friction so that is 0 0.5 times 100 so that will be equals to 50 Tama? 50 okay so to solve for P uh, just take some of forces ng X is equals to 0 and so just P is equals to or minus frictional force so transpose mo lang sa abila equals lang just the frictional force or that will be equals to 50 Newton. ayan okay so simple lang now again uh, ito yung pina straightforward na solution and most of the problems man na ma-encounter mo kay frictional friction is under the type 2 okay so proceed tayo to the next example so under the category of type 3 so, ano nga ba yung magiging final value natin for the load P? So, una natin i-analyze dito is yung for free body diagram 1 or for the block A alone. Okay, so, again, balik tayo dito sa figure na to. So, kapag nagsamisyon ka ng forces ng X, and equals to 0, so yung P mo will just be equals to sa free frictional force of the surface A, or that will be equals to 20 pounds. Okay, so saan ba natin makukuha yung isang possible value ni B? Ngayon, uh, para doon sa B, um, by considering the whole figure, yung whole system na yan, so ipagpatungin lang ulit natin. Okay? And kung i-analyze mo siya as buo, so di ba dito? Dito sa baba, andito yung frictional force ni B. Surface B. Okay, so kapag nagsamisyon ka ng forces X, so considering the whole figure, so when you take summation of forces ng X equals to 0, assuming to the right forces as positive, so P is equals to frictional force ng surface B natin. So yan yung nakuha natin na 30 pound. Okay, so mapapansin nyo meron tayong dalawang value ni e. P. So, meron kang 200 pound, ah, sorry, 20 pound, and meron kang value na 30 pound. Okay? So, between these two value, which do you think is the correct answer? So, again, ang pinapahanap sa atin is yung maximum force P. So, again, maximum po yung pinapahanap sa atin. So, between 20 and 30, which is which of these two is the maximum? Okay. So, kung ito yung sasagot nyo, kasi nga maximum mga hinahanap, so, sir, maximum eh. Dapat malaki yung value. So, if this is your answer, therefore, your answer is incorrect. The correct answer for this problem is at uh, 20 pound. Ayan po yung correct answer. So, analyze natin kung bakit ito yung tamang sagot. Again, ang sabi kasi doon sa iyong uh, problem, without causing either block to move. Either block to move. Ngayon, kung yung 30 pound ang ilalagay mo dito sa value nito, itong free body diagram na 1 natin, or yung for the block A alone. So, kung 30 ang ilalagay mo dyan, ang sabi nga kasi dito, 20 pound lang yung kailangan niya uh, before siya mag ng motion. Ano? So, any values na greater than 20, ang mangyayari dyan, itong upper block mo is gagalaw na. Okay? So, if ilalagay mo sa si 30, ang uh, tendency niyan, hindi, siya, hindi na siya magiging static, kinetic yun na sa ibabaw, gagalaw na siya. Ngayon, so, kung i-analyze mo itong baba, 
di ba? Ang sabi kasi doon sa baba, yung frictional force na kaya niyang dalhin is hanggang 30 pound. So, kung ilalagay mo yung 20, ibig sabihin, pasok na pasok pa yan. Kasi, ano pa eh, nasa range pa eh. Hanggang uh, 30 pound daw yung kaya niya before gumalaw yung ilalim. Okay? So, again, ang final answer for this problem is yung 20 pound. So, I hope clear tayo doon. So, ito naman is maunawaan nyo pag nag-solve kayo ng nag-solve ng problems for friction. Okay, so let's proceed with the next uh, category.